Hey Horde, my name is Pris, and today I'm going to be covering a short primer on Tripwire. So what is Tripwire? Tripwire is a wormhole mapping tool that we use to share information about what it is that we've scanned uh, out in our space. It can be a very powerful tool as we can see fairly cl clearly where we have connections to other parts of the EVE universe. So let's dive right in. So the first thing you want to do is go to tripwire.eveapps.com and click on register. So once you click on register, you'll be granted with this page here uh, and you'll want to create an Eve API key. So by clicking on that, that'll take you to the API screen and you'll get a um, API key management that'll look something like this here. Uh, don't bother copying any of this information because I'm going to delete it afterwards. But Basically, the only status that Tripwire needs is account status so that it can see um, basically where you are. Uh, and we'll get more on more into that later. So once you have that verification code and access mask, you're going to just copy them into here. And you're going to register your username. You're going to put a password. And you're going to click register and create your account. I already have an account created, so I'm not going to be doing this, but I'll just go ahead and log right in with mine. So once you have created an account, by the way, you can use the Eve SSO if you'd rather than not having to remember your separate Tripwire username and password. So once we log in, we're going to see uh, the initial screen here. So I'll just give a brief overview of what we're looking at here. So you're going to see uh, the default is set to Jita, the um, middle segment here is where you're going to add signatures on the right is going to be notes and on the bottom here is going to be where everything's mapped up so the first thing that you want to do is go up here in the upper right hand corner to settings go to your account settings and make sure that you have the corporate horde mask selected uh, you don't want to be using any one that's particular one because this is the one that's used for our entire alliance so uh, click that and then click save the next thing you want to do is go ahead and um, add a character. So we're going to go ahead and go through that process real quick. And we're going to add a character. This is just a fake one. I'm not actually tracking this guy. So what that'll do is uh, allow you to actually track where your character's at. So here I can see I am currently in J224145. So the next thing I want to do uh, once I've changed my mask and added my character for tracking is make sure that auto follow is engaged. So what this will do is automatically follow to whatever system that you're in. And that auto mapping is also engaged. That's this button right here. So the, th the final thing that you want to do in kind of this introduction section on getting set up with everything is to create a new tab for KSpace. So KSpace is going to be all of our connections um, to other parts of known space um, and then just click OK. So once that tab is loaded you should see an overview of everything that everybody scanned. So from left to right from old to new. So the oldest stuff is going to be on the left and the newest stuff is going to be on the right. You can see I just scanned down this one. Uh, there's my little dude there and you can see I'm in J224145 which is off of RQH Tech MY. So, since I'm inside this wormhole, let's go ahead and click on the wormhole. I jumped in from RQH, which was a R943, and I can mouse over that and see what the max mass and, and max jumpable was. I jumped in and it automatically created this K162 for me because it knew that I was going to be here, and that leads to RQH. So I've already gone ahead and scanned down much of the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to my Eve client here. You can see I've already scanned down all these signatures. And I've got I found four different wormholes. I've got a bunch of gas sites. So by highlighting one and pressing Control A, I can select all. Then Control C to copy, and then I can just Control V that into here. So what that does is it automatically creates these question marks. Now it's important that when you input a signature as a wormhole type that you say things about it. So the most important thing is going to be what type it is. 
So I've already gone ahead and, and looked ahead to see which, signet, which type of wormholes all of these are. So I'll go ahead and start filling those in. So first up I have LCE, which I know is a Z647. That's the one that I'm looking at here. And I know that's a Z467 because it says so in my overview, but it also says here in the wormhole type information. So because I know it's a Z467, I know it leads into unknown parts of space. That could be anything below a C3. Um, and I can see that it's not yet decayed and that it's still stable and that it also fits medium sized ships. But I could also tell that by seeing, hey, this is a Z647 here. That's one of the statics for this system. So I know that I found one of the two statics. So I'm going to go ahead and put in, uh, so click this little uh, less than symbol here and put in Z647 and it will automatically complete and just click save and now I can see that that one has a max mass of 500 million and a max jumpable of 20 million so I'm going to go ahead and input the uh, other ones here so LYJ was a B247 so I'll put that in here or 274 rather sorry and I know that that one is another one of the statics that's a high six static so that is a 3 million 300 million jump and a 2 billion max stable. Uh, so the other one that I have scanned down was my entrance, that's QDW. And what I can do here is actually just modify this question mark here and input QDW. When I hit save on this, it says, hey, that already exists. I'm going to go ahead and overwrite that and click save. So it'll automatically delete that extra SIG. So my final one that I've scanned down is YJZ. So I know that that one is a K162. And I also know, even though I haven't jumped into it yet, because it said when I went to this wormhole, it said it was dangerous unknown parts of space. That means it's either class four or class five. So if I really wanted to, I could say this is a class four for now until I actually go to it and scan it down. So that's kind of an overview. The biggest thing is you're gonna be constantly selecting signatures, copying and pasting and going back and forth. What's cool is you see this thing in the upper right hand corner where it says click to delete missing SIGs. If I happen to jump into a system that's already been scanned by somebody else, but the SIGs have changed, I can click that and say click delete missing SIGs because uh, let's say that it's 10 hours later and I want to remove anything that hasn't already been scanned. So now you can see here over the C2 I've got a C1, a C4, now granted this could also be a C5, and a high sec. So I know that I have three wormhole options off of here. So if I uncheck the Corp K space, you can see it in a different fashion here, and I can see that I have four wormholes total here with this one. So at any point I can click on one of these and look at some additional information. Uh, now granted, because I'm still in this system, I can't change too much, but I will show you what some of these other ones do. So if I wanted to mark a particular system with a flare, like saying that there was enemies there, or you know we're gonna use it for the fleet, I could use that, we don't really presently. But another thing I could do is look at the mass and see if anybody has uh, jumped through. So like on this one here, I can see that this guy, uh, went in an Astero at this time so what that means is I know that he's probably the one that probed this down so he's probably the one that's gonna have the bookmarks for that hole so moving on to the next section um, for FC's this can be really useful because you know when you log in here and see the Corp K space tab you can see all the stuff that we have connections to so I've got you know a bunch of different stuff not not a ton of stuff today because most of these are connections to space in within our space but um, if if I were to find a particular null set connection and I wanted to know well who's the one that scanned this down what I could do using that mass tool is see okay well this guy went through one of these wormholes at this point it's not a hundred percent reliable um, as you can see as I'm look, clicking around on these sometimes it doesn't show up but on the times that it does that that can be um, a tool for FCs to know who they need to talk to to get bookmarks uh, for a particular connection. Another thing that you can do as an FC is install a third-party application that will allow you to utilize the tripwire data to figure out the fastest path to a particular system. So that, that application is called Short Circuit. 
It's an open source application. I can put a link to it in the description. And what it does is it basically just it acts as a, a route planner, but it utilizes the wormhole information to find the quickest route to a particular system. So by going in and setting up it with the tripwire data, I also enable Eve Scout so I can get the Thera information as well. I can get our tripwire chain. So let's say there is an op in Gehi that I want to find the fastest path to. What I can do is click, uh, type that in in my home system here and click find path. Well, so now I see I have a wormhole in FTECN uh, that goes to um, J213344 and that dumps out and it's a, a large hole and that dumps in, out into Gesh. So Gesh is five jumps from the nearest Thera system. Uh, so I can use that information to know that if I were to go through FTECN, go through the C5, go to Gesh, go to Thera, I could then through Thera go to Zephin and get to Gehi in 19 or 18 jumps total. Gehi from 7RM normally is about 43 jumps, I believe. So it, it cuts the, the distance in half. Um, there are other aspects to this tool. You can say you only want to use large holes, extra large holes, ignore end of life. Um, you can ignore particular things, but that can be a very useful tool for FCs to see, hey, we need to get across the map as quickly as possible. Utilizing the data that we've already put in here, how can I do that? So once I go into here and I see, okay, FTACN J21334, I can see that um, I can go over here to FTACN and see there's this whole J213334. I click that, and it's a little hard to understand. It's a little hard to follow that chain because if I go over here, Gash is all the way over here. So this is probably one of the downsides to tripwires. The way that it maps stuff out isn't really the most intuitive because you can see here I have the C5 selected, but it's putting the, the connection to Gesh all the way over here. Alternatively, what I could do is say, click on the uh, hole itself and click off the case base tab and I could see FTECN J21334 to Gesh. Or I could just go up here in the top left and just type in Gesh and hit enter and it'll show me the route that way. So I can see Gesh to that to that. So that can be a useful tool um, to understand how we're connected to other parts of space. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, like I said, a lot of what you're going to be doing and what I like to do is just uh, copy and paste um, into the tool as I scan stuff down. You don't have to do it all at once as I did. Um, but let me go ahead and give you a demonstration of how it automatically maps stuff. So I'm going to go to that class 4, class 5, whatever it was. I'm going to um, warp to 0 because I've already gone ahead and Warped bookmarked the 0. Um, I've, I've already bookmarked exactly on top of the hole. So I know that this bookmark is going to take me directly onto the hole. Here I am in my little Helios cloaked up. So when I initiate the wormhole connection here it will automatically so I'm in J155711 it will automatically update my position here and automatically add the tag there so you can see here I am it, from the C2 to here I know that that's that so here I can say well, what was this this was an N766 so I just go in here and I type N 766 and I can see hey that's the connection there so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get off to a safe here so I don't get killed but um, that's pretty much it so as you uh, enter a new system you could just go ahead and control A, control C, control B, put those SIGs in and then as you scan them down update the information about them. If you have any other questions feel free to reach out to me on Discord or uh, post in the forum thread that I'm going to be creating for this video as well. Thanks so much for your time and have a good one.